for now I'll be known as the woman with the in the pajamas <laughs> but um, I'm preaching the word of Jesus and um, so um, I do not care I do not care how I wake up or whatever but anyway um, I feed the homeless I feed the homeless once per month and I gave a speech um, not last month but the month before and um, last month it got my speech got um, you couldn't hear it because of the music so um, this is just a, so this is a continuation of the speech last month I was I was out of time constraint, so the Lord put in my mind to continue this today. I really apologize to anybody for, um, because this speech was supposed to be done before Christmas. So if you have any, um, so therefore, you know, just, just bear with me for the, the Christmas issues that I have in the speech. Okay, whenever um, there used to be altar calls at church, I used to hate it. I used to sit in my seat and watch people go up. As a matter of fact, I hated it. Pity, I didn't know what I was missing. I, I was around 12 at a summer camp when they had an altar call. The spirit was on me to go to the altar call and I listened. That was the first time because, as I said, I always hated it. God has always been there with me ever since. Sometimes I used to have bad dreams before and it all stopped after I went up and gave my life to Jesus. There have been close calls with, there have been close calls on my life uh, but my father was there to protect me every time. There was an incident that I still do not know how I got out of. I still do not know how I got out of it today. There, I can, I can look back on my life and see where Jesus has delayed me from stuff that has happened, that is, you know, from stuff that has, that is happening on the road and stuff there was i i was from new jersey and there was an an accident on the two sides of 295 it's it's where i drive to go to work and it's like the devil was on the road and i used to buy like a frappe before i go to work and for some reason they got my order mixed up and i was you know i was bossy and and in a hurry and whatever because um i'm always in a hurry in new jersey and um and somehow when i i just got there when i got when i when they finally got my order i just got there there were a pile up of vehicles most people were dead on my side police wasn't even in there wasn't even there yet over on the other side there was a trailer um a trailer tractor that pulled over on the other side so death was right was um right in the highway and i missed it so um i'm so thankful for that and i can there there's so many incidents i can tell you but uh, but I do not have time to go into it now. Um, um, as we're coming up on Christmas, I think this is why Jesus was born. We have to think about the reason why Jesus was born. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to save you and to save me. Can you imagine a love like that? Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane and he was praying. 
He knew that what, what was about to become of him. He asked his father to let this cup pass from him if it was his will, it was his father's will, but heaven stood still. He was human and he was about to die a gruesome death. For the first time in his life, he was scared, but he knew he had to follow the wishes of his father. Do you know the lashes is not just a belt that was that it was actually an, an instrument that's devised to tear off the skin of your back. So when whenever they give Jesus a lash, it tore the skin off his back. That's why he was so bloody. And he was unable to carry the cross all the way because he had no skin on his back. By the end, but at the end he laid he laid on that on the cross and laid down lay down for the nails to be driven through his hands and feet. How many of us would do that without squirming or trying to run away? I knew I would, you know, but he knew what he was born to do. On the cross, he said in a loud voice, it is finished. He conquered hell so that we, so that we may be in, so that we may be in heaven with him. All because he and his father loves us so much. Today, I ask you to examine yourselves. Is this a, is this a life? Is this is this the life you are living? Worth Jesus lying down his lying lying down. Let me start over. Today I ask you to in, examine yourself. Is this the life you are worth? You are living worth Jesus lying down his life, dying a gruesome death for. As I, as I want, all I want for you is to come to him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Um, I'm asking you today to do your part because it's very easy to come up in front. Jesus said, whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my father. Do not live in a hog pen, as I'm, as I'm a Texan now. This is, not, this is not the way Jesus expects you to live. Brush Satan off you. I'm begging you, please. Do not, do not be like me when I was just sitting there. I'm asking you to come up and see how your life will change. Let heaven rejoice. Get in a good Bible-based church. I cannot stress more, more on it. Even if you're covered with the armor of God, you still need your, you still need your backs not to be exposed for the enemy to attack you. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. Please do not let the blood of Jesus go in vain, in vain in your life.